uh, like Bill said, my name is Jonathan. I've been at our studio for, uh, for for about the last three years or so, and I'm I'm really excited to show you this because it's we've been working on it for for quite some time now, and we are only just now starting to show to show it to people. Uh, what, one thing you should know before we even uh, spend a lot of time discussing that is that if you if you want to use our notebooks and you open up whatever version of our studio you have installed, the chances are that you'll be disappointed because the current stable version of RStudio does not have notebooks. Uh, this is a feature that is, uh, we would consider to be complete, but it is still in development. So if you want to play with notebooks, you can do it today, but you'll need the preview version of RStudio to do it. So everything that I'm about to show you is available today, but only in the, the RStudio preview. So let me give you an idea of what we'll be talking about today. We'll be talking about some, some background uh, concerning notebooks, and data analysis workflows. Um, I'll talk uh, just briefly about, about notebooks themselves. Uh, we will spend almost all of our time doing a hands-on demo. This is a very interactive feature, and we will devote most of our time to, to showing you exactly how it works. Uh, and finally, we will have some time at the end, like Bill mentioned, for, for questions and answers. So if, if, I, if I seem to be ignoring you, uh, please know that I am not. We're going to come back and do questions uh, primarily at the end. So let's talk a little bit about data analysis uh, workflows. And, and by workflows, I mean that the way that you typically engage and, and interact with R as you're doing your analysis process. If you are a user who is new to R, or you, if you've ever worked with somebody who is like just getting started with R, you typically see them using this sort of a workflow. They'll, ha they'll be typing R commands in the console, and then looking at the result and the output of the commands, and then issuing another command. So they sort of have this ad hoc conversation with R. Enter a command, look at the output, think a little bit, enter another command, look at the output, like, and, and so on. And there's actually nothing wrong with, with, doing, with doing R this way. It, it's, it's really fine for exploratory analysis in the early stages, but it, it has a very serious drawback, which is that it is not reproducible. And this is one of the whole points of using a, a tool like R to do your data analysis is that you want your analysis to be very reproducible. But when you're just entering ad hoc statements, you're really not leaving a, much of a record besides your console history of what you did or, or why you did it or, or what the output was. And so most people who have used R for, for some time have learned that instead of just entering stuff ad hoc at the console, most of the time what you want to use is an R script. Uh, this is sort of another level above a, a regular like R console thing. It's instead of just entering stuff at the console, uh, you're actually forming a script that leaves a record of what you have done. And this has a huge amount of advantages over just entering code ad hoc at the console. Uh, your, your, your analysis is now documented, like you have a record of what you did. It is also now repeatable which is to say that you can now run the same analysis over and over as, as you need to, and it's even shareable. You can, you can take this .r file and send it to anybody and say, hey, do you want to do the analysis that I just did? You know, there's, there's no smoke and mirrors. Here's the thing, uh, here's the thing that I did. So th this is actually where, where many R users stop their, their exploration. So they, R scripts, output, done. But if you think about this workflow, it still actually has a lot of room for improvement. Uh, for one thing, the R output is disconnected from the input. Uh, your, your R code, this script produces some output, and it's, it's really not connected in any way to the script itself. Um, you have to save the output separately. Typically, this is not actually the end of the line. The, the data and the, the visualizations and the, the results that are generated from your R code don't end their lives in the R console or in a viewer window in, a, in R studio. They actually end their lives somewhere else in, in a document or a presentation or, or, or some other artifact that you're generating. And so w when you need to re-perform your analysis, you sort of have to do this export and copy and paste thing to try to get the, the results into, uh, in, into their final format. And finally, the documentation in an R script is usually somewhat sparse. If you if you if you leave comments, that's great. Most people don't, um, and there, there's there's often not a lot of context for for why you're doing what you're doing. So to, to solve a lot of these problems, we introduced something a, a few years back called R Markdown. Uh, it borrows uh, heavily from some ideas uh, in, in literate programming, and it's it's designed to address some of the 
some of the issues that I just talked about. Our markdown lets you do the same kind of thing you do in an R script, which is that you can you can write code and then and have a record of it, but it also allows you to bring together your output and your code in a rendered document so that your document itself and the code are are combined. This solves both of the problems I was talking about earlier. Like not, now you can see your code and your output together. You can actually make your code your final document. They're, they're one and the same artifact. And we ha it is possible to create all kinds of very high quality professional documents from this. And you typically don't need to have another tool that you export this to. Like this can actually produce your final like, HTML file or PDF document or, or, or Word document or, or whatever that you need to, need to email out. Even though this is a very powerful tool and it has received a, a lot of uh, a lot of attention and a lot of um, a lot of accolades, it still has uh, it, it still has some problems when it comes to interaction. If you, if you look at where we've come from from all the way from a typical new R analyst, like th this this is appealing because it's simple. Like we by the time we get over to here, you know, yes, you know, yes, it is literate. Yes, there's it is wonderful to mix your your context and your narrative and your code and produce all these wonderful output formats, but something has been lost. This is this feels easy and fun, and this this is beginning to get quite complicated. So we 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 set out to, to create a way of interacting with R that gave you a lot of the benefits of of the literate programming model and the, it, without uh, without a lot of the the complication that we have in this. So this is this is the interaction model for R notebooks. You'll notice this is a this is a very simple way to interact with R. You you run some code, you see the output right beneath the code, and uh, I'll give you a a much longer demo of these in a minute. So l let me talk very generically about notebooks before I spend a bunch of time uh, showing you how they work, just so you can get an idea of of, of the philosophy. Uh, we want you to be able to interact with R in kind of a single seamless stream. And what we what we mean by that is that you you don't need to have four or five windows or panes open. You should be able to have a single window open in which you can cohesively interact with R. We we wanted to make it possible for you to iterate quickly on your code and output, which is to say that you should be able to change your code and see the and see the change in output together in one place. Again, not not spread out, um, not not in a not in a big batch, but but one line of code at a time. Uh, you, you should be able to leave a clean and reproducible record of your analysis in, in, a, in really a simple text file. And, and by this again, we mean that w as you are doing your data analysis, you are actually creating like uh, you're creating the final document that you'll be using to, to communicate and publish your analysis, and you're, you are also documenting exactly what you did so it can be repeated. Uh, you'll be able to document your analysis with rich literate prose. By this we mean that you can use all the power of R Markdown. At, which includes many very high quality professional layouts and, and tools for, for formatting your text. Uh, these things can be shared and published easily. And because it's just our markdown, you can export it to, to any format that you like very quickly and easily. All right, so with that, uh, we are going to spend the majority of our time uh, in, in, a, in a demo. So uh, please give me one, mo one moment while I switch over to the demo. All right, so here is here is a R, R notebook, and at first glance, it really looks a lot like an R Markdown document because it is an R Markdown document. However, it actually has a lot it actually has a lot of uh, unusual features that differentiate it from an R Markdown document. Uh, so, just to give you an idea of what it's like to to run code in the notebook, let me run this this chunk of of code. Now I'm going to run it by clicking here on the green button, and you, you you may know if you've used R Markdown before that in an R Markdown document, this green button would actually just send the text to the console. But you'll notice here I don't have a console. Um, I'm, I'm just showing you uh, I'm just showing you a notebook. So I'll click this, and you can see here that it ran this chunk. You might have you might have seen a green flash that, in, that indicated that the the code was sent to R, and it shows me the output right beneath. The, the code. Now, I can update the output just by updating the code. So if I if I want this to be say, I want to generate the numbers from 1 to 20. There we go. 
so this is a very, like, th think about the way that, that, we, that you had that very first conversation with R where you were entering code and seeing the results immediately. This gets you back to that quick iteration cycle that, that's, really, that's really a lot of fun without losing a lot of the benefits of doing things in a, in a much more documented and, and literate way. Uh, you, you might notice that a lot of what I'm saying is right here in the document, and that is somewhat intentional. I've prepared this document as a, as a notebook tutorial, and you'll be able to download it for yourself after the webinar if you like. So don't worry about missing anything in this document or, or trying to remember everything that, that I'm saying. Uh, you will be actually be able to use the same document to do a sort of self-paced notebook tutorial when, when we are finished. So a lot of times your output from R is just a, an object or, or a number or a, or a single result, uh, but sometimes it, your notebook chunks or your R code are, are also going to output graphics. So here's an example of, a, of some code that, use, that uses graphics. I'll run that. You can see that produces a plot, again, right inside my editor, which makes it very easy uh, for me to, to tweak attributes of the plot. Uh, if, if I wanted to, I could change, for instance, uh, what, what the size was mapped to and, and, and rerun that if I want to. So you can see here you, you, can use, uh, you, can, you can use textual output, you can use graphical output, and really you can use just about any code that produces output. Like that output is just going to show up beneath the code. Another, uh, another type of content that, that people are starting to use a lot more is HTML widgets. And if you haven't played with these, uh, we really recommend that you check them out. They offer you a way to, to perform interactive graphics right inside RStudio, right inside your documents. So here is a chunk that produces... Uh, an interactive graph. I'm going to run the chunk. You can see here this has actually produced a, a an interactive graph using HTML widgets. And this HTML widget just gives me a time series graph that I can easily adjust with a with a nice sliding window. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time here on HTML widgets, but but just know that most of the time when your code produces output of any kind, that output is going to show up right inside of the notebook, and we support all the major output types that that our studio does. So we've talked a bit about output types. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what it's like to run code in the notebook. And I, I mentioned earlier that we, we, we want this to feel like a sort of a single seamless experience for interacting with R. And that means that anything for which you formerly had to sort of reach out for the console pane, uh, we, we wanted to make sure that you didn't have to do that anymore. So one of the things that you need the console pane for is understanding what stuff has been sent to R and what stuff hasn't. So to address that, we, we created this little execution bar that you may have seen. Uh, to, to give you a, a better look at how it works, uh, I've created this chunk here, which simply uh, takes a little while to run by having some sleep, sta sleep statements. Let's run this and see what happens. You can see here that RStudio is drawing this little green bar on the side of the chunk. The, the light green indicates that that code has not been sent to R, and the, and the dark green indicates that it has. Let me run it one more time so you can see the effect. Another thing you, you should notice here is that uh, we're, I'm actually seeing the results streaming in real time as the code runs. So you don't have to wait for the whole code to execute in order to, in order to see what, what output it's producing. You can actually watch in real time as statements are, sent, are pulled out of the, the queue, sent to R, the results are, are returned, and you can see the output appearing in real time. Sometimes uh, that is going to be sufficient. You just, you'll just want to run, run one chunk at a time, but sometimes you'll want to run things in a little more ad hoc way. If you want to do that, you, you can also run uh, portions of a chunk only, and this is one way in which the R the R Markdown notebooks differ from some other notebook approaches you might have seen. So they are, it is completely possible to run any portion of a chunk uh, as, as though you're running the whole chunk itself. So here is a chunk that does a couple of different things. It reads a CSV file uh, containing a list of cities and their locations, and then it plots them onto a leaflet map. So let's run this code just one chunk at a time and see what happens. So, I'll, sorry, one line at a time. So I'll just run this line, and if you saw, you probably saw a green flash there in the gutter as that line was sent to R and returned. Now I'm going to run just the second line. You notice that that now actually printed out the, the the data as I as I requested, and now I'm going to run this third line here, 
this, or this statement, I suppose. And you can see that, that it runs the statement and then, and then show, shows me the output for that statement. Now you'll notice here that I didn't actually r see the results for the entire chunk when I did that. When you run one single line, it treats that single line as though it were the entire chunk. So if I were to now click this button and run the entire chunk, you can see it does both things now. It, it reads the CSV file, it prints out the results, and then, and then draws the map for me. So the, the idea here is that it, it should be very easy for you to, to take one little bit of code, execute it, and see exactly what that one line of code did. So let, let me step through it one more time so you can see this line produces no output, this line produces a, a block of text, and then this line actually produces the map. So, so it's very easy to step through your code sort of line by line and see what each line does without, without needing to jump into a, uh, like a, a, whole, a whole chunk execution mode. So we've talked about what it's like to run, uh, oh, what, what, one more thing, uh, this is sort of a small thing, but something that people have asked us for for a while and we, and we, finally, uh, we finally took the time to do. You, you'll notice here that I didn't actually have to select this whole, this whole thing and run it. And that is because we, we now actually detect uh, where your statement begins and ends. And when you hit con Command Enter on, on the Mac or, or Control Enter if you're using a different operating system, uh, we now actually will run the entire th the entire statement instead of just one line of the statement. And this is really to prevent you from getting into an awkward situation where R is waiting for you to finish the statement, but you don't know it's waiting because this in this mode, uh, you, you really typically aren't using the console. <sighs> All right, so, we, so we've talked about the different kinds of output you could have inside of a notebook. We've talked about what it's like to run code inside the notebook and interact with R. And again, you, you should think of this as, as, a, as really a new way to, to interact with and have a con conversation with the R interpreter. But one thing that uh, you might not be aware of is that R Markdown, and, and really by extension notebooks, has support not only for R code, but also for, for code written in other languages. So you're not actually just limited to R chunks. You can have code in, in Bash or Python or C++ or, or a variety of other languages. Here, for instance, is a code chunk that is written in Python. This, this just prints out the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, here I'm asking it to print out the first 11 terms. So there, there's no R here, it's all Python, but I can run it just like any other chunk. And you can see here it actually fired up the, the Python interpreter and fed this code into it, and then I can see the result uh, right, right beneath the chunk. And uh, this also works, uh, here's an, another example, this, this also uh, finds a, a particular term in the Fibonacci sequence using the RCPP engine. So you can see here I'm making an RCPP function, which actually uh, takes a couple of minutes because it, need, it needs to compile. And then I can use that function here to compute a particular term in the Fibonacci sequence. So the idea here is that like the, a notebook is not just a, a way to mingle R and your documentation and, and produce something you can share. Like it, it, it can actually be used to compose a workflow that uses tool chains and systems from like a, a really a variety of different uh, a variety of, of different languages. So you can you can use a notebook to create your data analysis workflow in, in a very language agnostic way, even though R is, is sort of the, the, the host for your, for your system. So we, we've talked a bit about um, what you can produce and how to run code and like the ability to run code in different engines. Uh, let's talk a little bit about error management. So sometimes your code is going to generate errors. Uh, it, is, it is just going to happen. Um, <laughs> We, we have built a bunch of error management features into the notebook as well. So here is some code that generates an error. Uh, I specified error equals true so that, it, so that this code can run without, uh, without stopping the notebook. But if I try to run it, you'll see that I'll, I get this error here. And this error basically tells me uh, what, what happened here. So you'll notice a couple things happen when we get an error. One is that we, we, we color the gutter to tell you which which line generated the error. In this case, there's really only one line. But in, in many cases, if you, if you have a long multi-line statement, it's very helpful to know which of the lines in your, in your code actually generated the error. So I'll highlight that for you. We'll typically show you a traceback of the error, which, which tells you where the error came from. So if I click Show Traceback here, you can see it, it, it tells me uh, you called source, source called file, and then in, 
and when a file tried to open, it couldn't find it. So we, we hope you'll find that when you, that when you encounter errors, again, like you're not going to need to dig into the console to figure out what line of code generated the error. Like that information, as well as all the information you, you need to know where the error came from, is going to be available to you right inside the notebook. So, so we've talked quite a lot about what it's like to run code in the notebook and, and, how, and how to do it. Um, we've talked about line-wise execution and about run, running the whole chunk at once. Uh, there are also, also a variety of tools, uh, which I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, but you're, you're not typically going to want to just run individual chunks or lines. A lot of times you'll want to bring your whole notebook into a consistent state. And we have built a number of tools for, for this, which I'm going to show you. So it, it is very easy to to run just the current chunk or the next one. Um, these commands are, are, are very helpful. They will allow you to help to bring your notebook into a consistent state by running all the chunks that are above or beneath your particular chunk. And, and when you do this, let me, uh, let me show you how this works. So I'll say run all chunks above. And you can see now I'm actually getting a little progress bar at the bottom of the notebook here that shows me, uh, shows me what's being run. And then you'll notice here that I am brought right here to where the error is. Uh, when, it, when it's finished. So th there, are, there are lots of tools for, for running your, your notebook, a lot, a lot like you were knitting an R Markdown document. And I'll, I'll talk about the difference between running code in a notebook and knitting in, in just a minute. So I'm going to, uh, to switch now to our studio and, and talk a little bit about how to save and, and share these things. So here is our studio. I'm going to bring bring my notebook back into our studio here. You'll notice that when when you bring the notebook into our studio, and and open it, it will typically maximize the the, the pain so that you, you the console gets out of your way because most of the time you don't need it. It's still there if you do. So you can you can just open it up here, and you can see that when you execute some code inside the notebook, it is actually just sending it directly to the console, and you're seeing the result here. Uh, but most of the time, this is going to be redundant. So, uh, so you're, you're not going to need to look at it. So I, I promised that we were going to look a little bit at at saving and sharing. So, so let's do that. So if, if you were familiar with, with R Markdown, you probably know that when you need to update your document after making a change to your code, you actually need to completely re-render the document. So there, there's this command at the top called knit, which, is, which you can see, like here's I have this other document which actually contains my presentation, I, in order to update my document, I need to knit, which means to re-render the whole thing, rerun all the code chunks, and so forth. In a notebook, however, it is not necessary for me to rerun all the code chunks to see the document because, if you think about it, I have actually already run these, these, these chunks, and I already have the output av available. So in a notebook, you, we can actually generate the HTML uh, result without without rerunning any of your code. All we need to do is 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 render the document part and then put put the output that you've already generated into it. So let me show you what that looks like. So I'll hit preview here, and you'll see that here. Let me maximize this to make it a little bit easier to see. So you can see here we have here we have exactly uh, exactly my no my my notebook that I've been working on, and you can see all of my all of my code. Here's, there's, there's my sequence, there's my plot, there's my interactive widget, uh, there are all of my random numbers that I, uh, that I really enjoy generating. So all of the, all of the output and, and input that I encountered in my session is right here inside this file. And again, this generating this thing is not like gener generating an R, an R Markdown document where, where I've got to re-render the whole thing. Whenever I save the notebook, this file is updated. So, for instance, let's say let's let's say I now want to generate, I don't know, maybe 200 sequence, 200 numbers. Now I'll save this, and you can see that it's going to update here with a sequence of of 200 numbers right on the side. So every time I update this thing, it's going to update the the preview here on the right. So you can see these things are are much easier to iterate on than a traditional R Markdown document because the whole the whole step of re-rendering things is gone. It's, it's a much more immediate system where all you have to do is save it and it will instantly update um, with, 
uh, with the file. Now it's it's important to note that this this file that I'm viewing right now, this HTML file, um, it's it's not only generated when when I have the, when I have it open here. This is actually generated every time you save any notebook. Let me, let me say that one, one time again because it's it's important to understand uh, when we later talk about how these things work. Whenever you save any notebook file, we will generate this 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 HTML file for you. This HTML file is basically the, the way that you can save and save and share the, the notebook content. Uh, in in other in some other notebook formats, there's there's really no separation between your code and your output. Like it's all in one all in one file. And in our notebooks, this is not the case. You have a very clean R Markdown document that contains just your code, but you also have this uh, this file. We call it the nb.html file because we're not we're not very creative. Uh, and could come up with a, uh, a cooler name. Anyway, we, we have we have this this file which contains not only your code but also a, a beautiful rendered copy of your, of your document as well as the output. So so uh, this thing contains your code and your output, uh, and it even contains the source code for for the notebook. So if you were to publish this to a um, let's open this up in here. So one second while I show you what this looks like here. So if, if you were to send this file to somebody, here's what they would see. Wait, sorry, that's my system preferences. All right, so if, if, you, were to up, if you were to send this to somebody, here's what they would see. You can see that this is a, just a nice rendered copy of my notebook with the output um, that I've created. And if somebody wants to open this file, like work on this notebook, they can actually download the original uh, RMD file right here. The RMD file is embedded inside the HTML, and what, one wonderful thing about this is that this this file that you share with somebody is not in some sort of like proprietary format that they're going to need a viewer to open. You can send somebody one of these notebooks or one of your rendered notebooks, and it's just an HTML file. You can open it in a web browser, as as I have done right here. It is it is very very easy to use, and if if they want to sort of continue your 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 analysis. It's very easy for them to download the RMD and do that. There's one other really interesting trick that you can do here, uh, for which I will switch back to uh, our studio. All right, so so I, so I just showed you that you can take that HTML file, open it in a web browser, it's it's and and like use that to to publish your notebooks. And really, uh, any any web host is it's just plain just plain HTML. But you can also use this to Use this HTML file to to share with somebody not only the code but also the output. So to demonstrate that, I am going to do something a little bit risky um, in, in this demo, which is actually to, so I'm going to close this R Markdown file, and I'm actually going to delete the R Markdown file. So here's the uh, here's here's the here's that demonstration R Markdown file that I've been working with. I'm just going to delete that file. All right, it's gone. So now all, I, I no longer have my R Markdown file. All I have is that, is that notebook HTML file. So <clears throat> um, you, you imagine, for instance, that somebody sent me this H, HTML file. Our, our studio, when you, so if you open this HTML file in a web browser, you will see what I just showed you, which is a rendered copy of the notebook. However, if you open the HTML file in our studio, it will actually automatically extract the R Markdown file so that I can continue working on your notebook as though it were my own. Let me show you how that works. So I'm going to click open an editor here, and you can see that my it opened up the R Markdown file, and that R Markdown file just got created here. So R Studio automatically took the HTML file, extracted that embedded copy of the notebook's code, and then produced for me this uh, this editing experience for the notebook that I just had. So this HTML file is sort of a, a magical jack of all trades. You can view it in a web browser, you can open it in our studio and continue to edit and work on the notebook. Um, it is a great way to, to bundle up your notebooks and, and share them with, with anybody. So um, let us talk a little bit more about uh, the, the, the notebook uh, ecosystem here. So I, I mentioned earlier that there's sort of this difference between previewing a notebook and knitting an R, an R Markdown document. And uh, I, I hope that I didn't give anybody the idea that these are sort of two, 
two different worlds and you have to pick one. You can actually use exactly the same document to uh, have a notebook and have a really nice professional uh, R markdown output. So you'll notice that in my notebook here, I've actually got two output formats defined. I've said that this thing is an HTML notebook and I'm using the default options for HTML notebook, but it is also an HTML document. And what this means is that I can preview it like a notebook, but I can very easily also render it like an R Markdown document. So let me show you how that works. I'm just going to pull down preview and I'm going to say knit this thing to HTML. Please ignore that. So this is going to take a few seconds. You may recall that we have a some C++ in here and some sleep statements, and, and here it is. So, so this is this is also my notebook, as you can see. It's got my 200 numbers in it. It has my plots and my widgets in it. However, this is this is no longer formatted like a notebook. I've actually rendered it to a publishable format. I've given it a theme and a table of contents. Um, this, is, this example is a HTML document because that's uh, really easy to show inside our studio, but it doesn't have to be. I could have rendered this to a PDF or to, or to a Word document or even to a dashboard for, for uh, uh, or in really any of the other formats that our Markdown supports. So my, my, my point is that a notebook should not be thought of as a, as a as this sort of scratch pad that you like use to like play with and iterate on ideas. And then when it's time for you to publish, You've got to open it up in like some other, like you've got to like create some other document and actually do your publishable output. This the, the notebook actually transitions seamlessly from this simple interaction mechanism right into something that uh, is your production quality output. So not only is every can every notebook be rendered as a R Markdown document. But any R Markdown document can also be treated as a notebook. Let me show you how that works. So I'm going to go create here. Um, I could create a notebook, or let's just create a new R Markdown document with it with the defaults here. So here's an R Markdown document. Uh, it's just the default one for, in our studio. And you'll notice here if I run if I run a chunk, I see the results right here below the chunk. Even though this thing is not a notebook, I can iterate on these chunks as though as though it were. And at, at this point, you may actually be wondering, wait a minute here, like, I, I, I don't know if I like that. This is not the way that I prefer to interact with our markdown. Uh, we, we, we have thought of that and know that some people will prefer using the console when they're uh, iterating on, on code inside our markdown documents. And for this reason, we have built in, uh, we built in a switch. So if you really prefer to use the console instead of having uh, the output appear beneath the chunks, as I've shown you today, uh, you can just pull down the net. Uh, sorry, uh, this this gear here right next to the net, and say I want the chunk out to be output to be in the console for this document. And so now, when I run one of these chunks, it'll just show up in the console instead, as as you are used to. So you have a choice. You can use the notebook style interaction model, where you can iterate on code and output sort of together in a single window, or if you prefer, you can use uh, the the multi-pane approach, like like you may be used to. Um, you may also be wondering if you have to do this for every document. If you really, really don't like the behavior, it is also possible for you to, to flip a switch inside the options um, that will allow you to, um, there we go, show output in line for all, all our Markdown documents. Again, this option is only in the preview. Uh, and if you don't like the notebook behavior, turn it off, don't create notebooks, and you will uh, have the same R Markdown experience you do today. Uh, we, we believe, though, that most people are not going to want to do this because there's really just so much power and immediacy in, in this mode. Uh, finally, I'd, I'd, I'd sort of be remiss if I didn't uh, spend a little bit of time showing you how to create a new notebook. It's very easy. New, our notebook. There you go. Um, really, this, this, this thing right here is the key. Anything that has the HTML notebook output format will, will inherit all the notebook behaviors that I just talked about. It will get a preview button which allows you to, to look at the output quickly instead of executing and rendering everything again. It gives you the, the, the inline output, uh, regardless of, of any other preferences you have set. And uh, it should be a very easy, very easy thing to do. Uh, inserting chunks is quite easy. Uh, command, uh, there's, there's a couple different uh, shortcuts, but it's very easy to add uh, new notebook chunks. Let's do that. Ta-da. So that's, 
that's what it's like to create a notebook. It's very easy to, 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 to start one, very easy to, to drop in new chunks and, and to mingle, your, mingle uh, your, your documentation and whatever else uh, you'd like to, like to have in your document. Uh, so, so this ends the uh, this ends the demo uh, portion of our of our webinar. However, um, if you uh, if you have questions, I will um, I'm I'm leaving this I'm leaving this open so we can we can try some things depending on what you'd like to do. So I'm now going to to switch back to my slides. One minute. All right. So here is all right. So uh, one thing I wanted to address quickly uh, and directly. Uh, some of you know that the Jupyter notebook. Also supports uh, also supports R, and you might be wondering like what like is this like how does this stand in relation to the Jupyter Notebook? And the answer is that we we're not you know we're, we're not trying to create something that's identical to the Jupyter Notebook. It, it it just has we've just selected a, a different set of trade-offs. So for one thing, there's a, a different interaction model. When you're in in the Jupyter Notebook model, uh, you have these these cells which can be like markdown cells or they can be you know. R cells or Python cells or whatever. Uh, in, in the R Studio model, you're actually interacting with a text file, which which gives you a lot of benefits in terms of flexibility, uh, but but also means that you have to worry about things like delimiters to tell you where the chunks end and begin. So again, I, we, we we're not claiming that one approach is better than the other, but uh, that they are two different ways of, of of interacting with with the pieces of the notebook. Uh, in in uh, in our notebooks, there's first class support for R, which means that if you are using R, uh, all of your chunks are, are typically going to be running in R, and there's some support for for other kernels. Uh, so, like we just showed you, it's possible to have a a, a Python chunk or a Bash chunk, but uh, our implementation of that is somewhat limited. For instance, we can't display graphics that were generated by those things very easily. Uh, whereas in in Jupyter, it's it's a lot easier to have sort of Taught, like first class support for, for other kernels. Hopefully we'll be able to improve upon this, but for right now, like anything that is not R for us is kind of a second class citizen, whereas uh, they, they have slightly better support for, for other, other languages. Uh, the, our plain text format is a bit more minimal to version control. Uh, Jupyter notebooks are uh, mostly just a, a large kind of JSON blob, uh, and in our, in the R Studio notebooks have the, the R markdown file and which is a lot easier for you to, to check into version control. You don't need a special viewer uh, because the, they render as HTML. And again, uh, like I just showed you, it is, it is possible to take your, your notebook and sort of cross-render it to a, a publishable format. It's a little bit harder to do with it, the Jupyter notebooks. I, I, I'm, there are a bunch of other differences. I won't go into all of them, but those are some, that's kind of a, an overview that might help you decide sort of which, which one to use if you're, if you're conflicted. A couple things that I didn't talk about, but I just want you to make, just want you to be aware exist. Um, there are different ways to control the execution queue. So, for instance, if you have, like, if you're waiting for several chunks to run, you can remove and, and insert uh, chunks to run later. Um, I didn't really talk about notebooks in R Studio server, but they are fully supported. In fact, uh, we now have a, a feature where you can start your notebook running and close the browser leave it running for however long it takes, then open the browser and come back. So notebooks pair great with our Studio server and are, are, are a great way for you to do your analysis uh, using nothing more than a web browser. Uh, all of the features of, of notebooks work very well inside our Studio server. In fact, we used uh, our Studio server to develop uh, almost all of the notebook features. Uh, version control, uh, which files check in, into an out of source control. Obviously, you have an HTML file that's quite large, it contains everything in, in the notebook, and then a smaller R markdown file that contains just the code. It's, it's, there are some best practices there. Uh, our website has more information. And finally, uh, rendering and hooks from other R front ends. So, and by that we just mean that it, it is possible to, like, R Studio doesn't have to be the only thing that reads or writes these things. Uh, we've made the format open source. Anyone can build. Uh, anyone can build a front end. Uh, so I, I'm just putting this slide up again so that you can uh, get a recall the philosophy of notebooks. Uh, you're going to interact with R seamlessly. You're going to iterate quickly. You're going to leave, leave a very clean and reproducible record of what you've done. Uh, you can document it like with lots of context using really rich formatting tools. You can share them. You can publish them. You can export them to other formats. Uh, we think that they are going to be very helpful. So we're right at about 45 minutes, so I want to leave lots of time for questions. Uh, these are two links that, that may be help, helpful for you. Uh, one is a link to the RStudio preview, or if you just Google RStudio preview, you'll find it. Uh, it 
the preview release is required to use notebooks. So don't uh, don't don't send me an email saying I can't find the notebook feature. It's because you're not using a, it's because you're not using the preview. And then here's a, a link to some documentation that we've written on on the notebook feature. All right. So with that, I am going to uh, to move to the the questions and answers. Says uh, so. So so one uh, person said, "What is the R Studio Preview Edition?" So the Preview Edition is simply. Uh, I'll just Google the R Studio. Here it is. It's it's a version of R Studio that is not necessarily stable. Uh, it is somewhat stable. Uh, you can you can use it for your day to day work, uh, but we primarily publish it so that people are able to. Um, have like try our new features before we unleash them on on everybody. So somebody asked, when will this be released? Uh, so the the answer is uh, as soon as it is ready. It, it it will it will not be too long. Um, I can't give you an exact timeline, uh, but we but we are wrapping up this release and it will be uh, it, it it will come out soon. So here's an an inter interesting one. Um, so one person asked, uh, does does our notebook work with Perl? The answer is is yes, it does. You can, Perl is one of the alternate engines, so you can have a Perl chunk just like you can have an R chunk. Uh, uh, somebody asked, uh, what languages are included? Is SQL? Funny you should ask. <laughs> we are actually uh, we we are working on this very thing. It is not ready yet, uh, but but before too long you will be able to have a SQL chunk as well as uh, as as well as an R chunk. Uh, somebody asked, "How does the notebook interact with with version with version control?" Uh, for instance, the Jupyter notebook does not play nice with version control systems. Yes. Yeah. So uh, the the way to think about this is that uh, the Jupyter notebook is is a is a single file notebook. Right. All of your code, all of your output, like it and configuration, just lives in this in this one single notebook file. In our studio, we have a two-file system. So there's one file which is just the R Markdown file. It's plain text, and that contains all of your code. There's a second file which is the HTML file that I was showing you over here, and this thing has this is this is a rendered copy which has an embedded the rendered notebook which has an embedded copy of your code. So if you would if you want to use version control and you don't want noisy diffs. You can check in just your code to version control, and this is what, what we recommend for most cases. And what that means is that um, if somebody else opens up your, your your notebook from the version control system, they won't see any of the code, the, the output from the code that you've run. They'll just see the code itself, and they can run it for themselves. If you want to, you can also check in the second file so that everybody also sees all the same output, uh, but then you're going to have some, some noisy diffs. And uh, let, like I mentioned earlier, uh, we, we are probably going to, to be improving the uh, the diffing system inside our studio itself uh, to, to make that a little bit easier. But for the most part, if you don't want if you don't want noisy diffs, you just want to check in the code, not not the output HTML file. Oh, here's a here's a very good question. Um, when you render a notebook, is the analysis performed in a separate environment as it currently is with NITR? And the answer is. No, it is not, and that's a, and that's a really good question because it's important to understand for the execution model. When you run code in the notebook, it's actually executed in your current R session. It is not executed uh, in some sort of separate session that can't see any variables. And I'll give you a I'll give you a quick uh, demo to show you to show you how this works and help you understand it. All right, so so, so here's my notebook again. So let's say let, let's go to let's go open up the console. Oh wait, one second. So I'm going to go open up the console one second here. I get the wrong button. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go open up the console <clears throat> in my notebook, and I'm going to create uh, I'm going to create something called a variable called x. I'll give that the value uh, I don't know 25 and 53. Those are good numbers. So now if if I add a new chunk in here, and I just uh, print out the value of x, you can see. There it is. So this is actually happening in the same R session as as your console is. You can think of sending like running notebook code as running it right at the console. It's 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 very similar. So somebody asked, uh, is notebook compatible with any type of interactive graph? Uh, the answer is yes, it is. In fact, here is an interactive graph. Um, it, it is it is very easy to to use interactive graphs. Any HTML widget is supported, uh, not not just this particular one. 
Uh, so somebody asked, uh, can I use this on shinyapps.io? This, this, this is a good question uh, because the answer is uh, that you, you currently can't. Uh, so shinyapps.io is only for, it's only for Shiny applications. And notebooks are not Shiny applications. They're, they're R Markdown files. And they're not even Shiny R Markdown files. They're just regular, like no server required, like static HTML, static HTML files. So uh, those can be published up, they can be published to our pubs or uh, they can also be published uh, to um, like really anything that supports it, supports static, static HTML. Uh, somebody asked, uh, what happens to interactive graphics uh, when you share the notebook output? That's a, that's a good question. So um, if you have, if you have used uh, shiny, shiny documents or or shiny, then you, you know that if you have interactivity, then you're typically going to need a server to run to drive the interactivity. And so you, you might rightly ask, if, if I create, if I have a notebook that has one of these interactive widgets in it, like what's going to happen if somebody, if I go to share that with somebody? And the answer is that it's going to work just fine. And the reason is that the only thing, the only kind of uh, interactivity that is currently supported inside notebooks is HTML widgets, and those don't need a server. They run entirely off code and data that is embedded inside the HTML. So uh, unless you're publishing to a format that inherently does not support interactivity, such as a PDF or, or Word document, the interactivity is actually going to work just fine. In fact, um, I'm gonna, uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate that for you. So here's, so here's our, our demonstration notebook that we just made, and you'll see that this HTML widget, which includes interactivity, um, just continues to work fine right inside the web browser. There's no R required. You can publish this to any any static web host. Somebody asked, uh, can you enter uh, tech-like equations, et cetera, into the notebook? Uh, that is a good question. The, a the answer is um, not, it's, it's, it's not incredibly easy to do right now, um, but that, that is something that we are currently working on. So somebody asked, uh, can we can we use our Shiny server to host notebooks? And the answer to that is um, not really. And you, you, there's really no, no need to do it because notebooks are not Shiny. So uh, you don't need Shiny server. You can use whatever web browser, you, whatever web, uh, whatever host you want. All right. Uh, somebody said, uh, how can I save a plot from the notebook? I right click uh, the mouse on the figure to save, but I don't know where it goes. Thanks. So. If you want to save just one plot from the notebook, um, I would I would say don't. Um, <laughs> there's, there's really no need to to, to use notebooks at all. Um, you can right click and and download the thing if you really want to, but it like like you like like you mentioned it it doesn't go anywhere useful. So 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 what I, so what I would do there is actually uh, just take take the take the uh, uh, take the code, um, run it at the console. And then you can export that as 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 an image, however you like. So the the, the notebook is not designed to, to to support the sort of workflow where you're like putting stuff elsewhere on the file system. If you if you want to take that like just one piece and export it, I would I would recommend just running that that one piece at the console. Um, and and fortunately, because the notebook works inside your main environment, you can actually get all of your data set up to run that line of code using your notebook, and then you can. Uh, you can run just that line to outside the notebook to use the to, to generate the plot. Uh, so, so somebody asked, uh, how easy is it uh, to insert external graphics into the notebook? Uh, the answer to that question is, it, it is uh, it is possible to to insert them into the rendered notebook. Uh, for instance, um, you can just it's just Markdown, right? So you can just down. So all, so all you need to do is Reference the external image as you usually would, like so. But you're not actually going. You're not actually going to see. Um, you're not actually going to see the, see the image inside it until you until you do the preview. It it is easy to have an external image in the notebook, uh, but you're not actually going to see it in the in the editor today. That's something that we may uh, we may improve in the future. What are your suggestions for creating notebooks which will need to be updated regularly? For instance, uh, downloading uh, uploaded uh, uploaded data. So. The, the, like I said, the, the notebook is just a static HTML file. Uh, however, um, one thing that you may not be aware of is that um, 
it, has, it is actually possible to render one of these things not just at the, like, not just using the, the, that preview click inside our inside our studio. You could actually do it from the uh, from the R console via R Markdown render. So you can do R Markdown render, and you can give it the path to your notebook file, and it will render the notebook uh, just as though you had you'd rendered it inside the R Studio IDE. So you don't really need to use R Studio to render one of these things. So if, if you want to actually like have a notebook that that is that updates automatically as time goes on, you would basically want to create a script that that runs R Markdown render and then put that script into a, some sort of like a cron job. Um, we are we are developing a product that will allow you to do this um, like very easily through a web interface as well.